Hey, it's LSF to here today, and today I'm here to talk about the Lexus RX allocation in the United States. While I was working on this video, one of my subscribers left me a message on the NX allocation video and asked me if I was going to do the RX allocation. I told him that it's coming soon, and here it is. Since there seems to be interest in this topic, if you are interested in other models allocation, let me know by leaving comments below in the video, or you can follow me on Instagram with the handle of at LSFTVideos and direct message me. Before I start on today's video, I would like to introduce our new Instagram account, at LSFT videos. You can see some daily updates on my NX 450H Plus, which may not be shown on any future videos, and you can reach out to me directly via direct messaging on Instagram if you have any questions. And now, let's start with today's video. I have to provide the same introduction as the NX allocation as I need to provide credit to the person who pulled the information from them and I took it and did more analytics to it. So then doing some analysis with the data so that you can understand more information of this data. So here it is. So one day I was surfing the Lexus forums and then I found that a bunch of links created by a user named Johnny5AZ on Reddit. In the Lexus forum, it posts allocation sheets for all the Lexus vehicles and broken down by models. I found that the information was quite interesting, but didn't find an easy way to interpret the data, so I decided to copy the information into a Google Sheet and produce this analytics sheet. The information is purely allocation information for the United States and not Canada, and in some cases, there are information that is blank. The intent of the allocation sheet is to find a new car for you to purchase and not to get up-to-date information for your VIN number. So if you already have a VIN, go to your dealership just to get that information. Don't bother with this sheet and try to figure out what kind of updates you have, because I think the dealership should have more up-to-date information than what we have here. I think what he has done is absolutely great, and he left a link to buy him a coffee. So if you find that this information is useful and interesting, and you want to support him, you should click on the link below that says buy Johnny 5 AZ a coffee. And of course, if you enjoy my video, you can comment, like this video, and share this video. And find if, if you find this helpful, you can also provide me a super thanks in the comment below. So here is the link of the community that provides the spreadsheet for your reference so that you can actually go and look at it yourself. And again, you can buy Johnny 5 AZ a coffee. All right, so now let's get started with this analytic sheet. The information I pulled has actually pulled 42 days of information. So this is more information than what I showed on the annex allocation. So this is between April 19th to June 3rd talking about 20,077 units, which is considerably quite high. But one interesting thing I found was there were five allocation of 2022 models in the sheet. So I'm not too sure why, but I've included it here. But in some of the reports on the future slides, I actually removed the 2022. When you look at the 20,000 units, the RX 350, there's 14,071 units allocated. Wow, a lot of gas only version. And when you look at the RX 350H, 3,577. That seems to be a lot less than the 14,000 allocation here. And when you look at the RX 500H, 2,424 units. That's even less than the 350H, which in some ways totally makes sense. The RX 500H is more expensive, so the demand most likely would be lower as well. So when you look at the breakdown, the RX 350 is about 70.1% allocation of all of this. And then we have 17.8% on the 350H and then 
1% on the 500H. So you can see this chart does not include the five 2002 models. I do not know why they are here, but for some reason, it's there. I would actually be sharing this link in the description below. And if you're playing around here, you can actually go in here and change this to, if you really wanted to see one month's worth of information, you can actually go here and say May 1st, and then you can say May 31st, and then you can see information. And then right, right now, when you when I start filtering this, you can now start seeing that this has now gone down to only one month of information. Definitely, uh, it takes some time to load, so you can see it's still loading. And once it's finished loading, you can see here we have 28 days of information. So you can keep in mind that this 28 days is whatever days information has been pulled. So it's possible that there's 31 days in the month, but there probably are three days that data was not pulled. So when you look at this, 8,667 is roughly one month's allocation here. Okay, and you can see the breakdown doesn't change too much. All right, but in this video, I am going to go and use the full amount. So which includes the whole, whatever data that we have in the spreadsheet. So I'm gonna go back here and put back to whatever we're saying, the 42 days of information, all right? Because I think what happened was because when they started in April, they pulled a lot of information in the month of April, which probably includes some allocation data that is probably prior to April 19th. I really don't know. So the manufacturing plant. So you notice uh, when I was looking at the NX, there were actually two Japanese plants that were building some of the annex and Canada, Toyota Motor Corporation. Canada is actually also making most of the annexes as well. So looking at the 20,000 units here, you can see I purposely broke down the 2022. I don't know why there were four units that were included here and one for the 350L all-wheel drive. So there's these are the five that were included. But outside of that, you can see here the RX350 gas and then the hybrids and the 500H. So exclusively, all hybrids are actually being produced in Canada here. You can see that uh, all of them are actually coming from TMMC. And then when you're looking at the 350, the premium and premium plus, there are some allocation that's coming from Japan. And about 1,993 are actually coming from Japan. The Kasu. I never know how to pronounce this, the, ka, the, the Kasu Shu plant. I guess someone can probably correct me on that, but I'll just call it the Japanese plant, right? So when you look at it, a lot of it is coming from Canada and almost just 10%, so 9.9% .9 is coming from Japan and the 90% is actually purely coming from Canada. So you can see that um, in Canada, the RX is actually produced a lot more in Canada than when you compare that to the NX. So when we compare the RX manufacturing plant versus the NX, the NX actually had 30% in Japan versus about 10% in for the RX. Uh, so there is a significant difference. It seems like the NX still needs uh, to be built in Japan to be able to produce, so meaning TMMC is not able to produce all the annexes required for the demand. But in the RX situation, it seems like the 90% versus the 70% on the annex, the 90% seems to be the plant is able to produce most of the RXs and probably they have more experience with the RX since the previous generation is also built in Canada. All right, so the next one is the drivetrain breakdown. So when we looked at that in the NX, it seemed to be a little bit different. And now when you look at the drivetrain breakdown in the RX, 65.3% all-wheel drives, 33.7% are exclusively front-wheel drive, and there is some percentage to about 1%, 193 units that we don't know because there was not information on the sheet. And then when you swip over to just Japan, 97.3% are actually front wheel drives. 
So Japan is actually building most of the front wheel drive versions here. And then there's 52 that's from Japan, but we don't know what they are. But from the trend here, it may be Japan is building the front wheel drive RXs. And then when you look here, the Canada built 72.5% are actually all wheel drives. There's 26.7% that are front wheel drive, and there's still like a 0.8% that is unknown. So when we compare the drivetrains, the percentage seems to be quite similar. So in the RX, 65.3% are all wheel drives. And when you look at the NX, it's 65.2%. So it's really 0.1% difference. So I don't think there's that big of a difference in the drivetrain. It seems like very consistent what we're seeing here. Now we move over to a new one that I have not done in the NX. And this is really just looking at the difference between the electrified ones versus the gas only. So when we saw in the first slide, you would see that there's a lot more RX 350s versus the 350H and the 500H. So you look at the percentage here, it's about 70% gas only and 30% hybrid. And when you look at Japan, Japan was actually 100% gas only vehicles. So if you're looking for a uh, Japan made, if you get the RX 350, maybe you'll get a Japan made one higher chance than getting one that's, that's made in Canada. So when you look at the hybrid gas breakdown for Canada, it's 66.8% that is gas only and 33.2% that are hybrids. So most all hybrids are actually made in Canada based on what we are seeing here, right? And I think we saw the same thing in the manufacturing plant. And this is now we're looking at the trim breakdown. There seems to be a lot more trims in the RX. And when you look at it, I do have some of the 2022 models here. I didn't break it down to only 2023, but it's fine here. I don't think that will change that big of a difference. So the biggest portion is the RX 350 Premium Plus. Then it comes down to the RX 350 Premium, which is about 19.8%. And then we go down to the RX 350 Luxury, and then we have the RX 500H F Sport Performance. Well, the 500H only has one trim, so this is actually the total of the RX the 500H. Then we go down the 350H Luxury, then we have the 350H Premium Plus, then we have the 350 F Sport Handling. So the F Sport still seems to be not as highly used. Um, uh, interested. It seems like the premium and luxury of the 350 has way more allocation than the F Sport handling. So if you're looking for F Sport handling, there will be less of those. Then we have the 350H premium, then we have the RX 350. So, and then we still go down and we have some other models here, which doesn't even show up because it's just so little. All right, so now we look at the breakdown by Canada and Japan as well. So Japan, you can see here, this RX 350L is a 2022 model, so it's not even showing here much. But when you look at the 350 Premium Plus and the 350 Premium, so the Premium Plus, almost 60%, and then there is 40%, which is just the Premium trim. Now, looking at Canada, again, Canada's building way more of these, so that's why there's a lot more of these breakdown we look at here the premium plus is about 25.5 percent the 350 premium 17.5 350 luxury then the 500 h then we have the 350 luxury so if you're looking at a 350 h uh, hybrid you're probably getting your vehicle earlier if you're getting the luxury trim then we have the 350 h premium plus then we have the 350 f sport handling then we have the 350H Premium. So if you're looking for a premium, you're, the likelihood of getting it, it will be probably lower. Then we have the 350, which has nothing. And then we have even less on the 350 all-wheel drive. And then the 350 F-Sport handling all-wheel drive. So if you're waiting for a 350 F-Sport ha handling all-wheel drive, it probably will take a little longer for you to get it chart actually looks very similar to the NX. 
So I don't know if it's the data that we're being pulled or what it is, but it seems like the states are like allocations are quite similar. So one thing I want to do is I'm going to uncheck the 2022. So now this is exclusively 2023. And you can see here California getting 4,059 of the 20,000 allocation. Then next is Florida, 2,202. Then it comes to Texas, then New York, and then New Jersey. And then all the other states that follow. All right. And then we also see here that the North and South Dakota and all these, I think Wyoming, are not actually getting any allocation. So I'm not sure why, but that's what it seems like. So I think a lot of people are probably waiting for the 350H. So I'm going to uncheck the 350 and the 500H. And let's see what this turns out to be. All right. So now we have the only the 350H. Looking at this, California still gets most of it, 1,164 units. Texas being number two, 261. Then we have New York, 194. Then we have Florida, 189. New Jersey, 140. So that rounds the top five. And then if we look at, I want to look at the RX 500. So California, 733. Then we have Texas. And then I think this is Washington, Washington State. And then we have Florida and then New York. That rounds the top five. So if you're interested in to play around with this, I highly suggest you click on the link in the description to play around and look at your state. And I think this is quite interesting information to see where the car allocations are going. And you can see that it's coming from Cambridge, Ontario, which is roughly around this area and going to California for a lot of the vehicles. I'm surprised that the closer location states are not getting higher allocations since it can actually arrive much faster. One thing I would say, the color seems to be quite consistent. We're seeing here that the blues are the least allocated. 62 are allocated for Grecian water. And in the NX, when we're looking at the shorter time frame, there were 120. Enamant White Pearl. In the NX, that was the most uh, color that was produced. Same comes with the RX. So RX has 5,109. And then we have the Caviar, which is 3,725. Then we have the Uranium, 3,578. Then we have the Nebula Gray Pearl with 2,876. So let's keep in mind that these colors, some of these colors don't exist in the R, uh, in the NX. So uh, if we look at a comparison, the Cloudburst Gray is 1,709. So from a ranking perspective, the gray seems to be number four, which is quite similar. And then when we look at the black is actually number three in the NX, but it's number two in the RX. The uranium is quite similar to the silver, which is uh, second in the NX, and now it's a third in the RX. So these are actually flipping a little bit. But now we have the number fifth, which is the Copper Crest. Uh, a new color, a color that is quite, I would say, shocking color. But then when you look at it, I was quite surprised that there was quite high allocation on it. 1,350 is quite, uh, I would say, a lot for a new color. And I guess a lot of you like that color, right? And then we have the Ultra White, which is an F-Sport exclusive color, my understanding is, and 1,012. Then we have the Nightfall Mica, which is really the dark blue, and that's 966. And then we have the Red, 769. Then we have the Nora, Nora Green Pearl, 627. And then again, the Grecian Water, 62. So the Grecian Water does seem to be quite low. But it does look like it's an exclusive F-Sport handling color as well. Which I'm surprised because I thought it would have been the Ultrasonic Blue Mica 2.0. But it seems like they picked the Grecian Water as the blue. Anyways, so when you look at this, similar situation blue is the least wanted color or produced color 
And then ultra white seems to be the most, I would say, uh, F sport handling color. So when you look at all the whites, white seems to be still the top allocated color for Lexus. So the bound here below, you can see now uh, the breakdown. So if you were looking for, let's say, the 350H Premium Plus, the most wanted color is still the white. Then it comes to the caviar, and then it's quite similar. Uh, the red is still below, so it seems like the trend follows quite closely. I would say that um, like for this one, the 350 Premium, so white is still number one. And then we have the caviar, but then you can see that the gray actually is higher than the uranium. Then copper crest, then we have actually red higher than the nightfall mica, then the green. So there are some variation differences based on the trim, but it's quite similar overall. There is actually different colors in the NX and the RX, so this one's going to be a little bit hard to compare. Black is seems to be the most used color 8093 are black colored and that could be a combination of different exterior paint and then we have the macadamia color which is 3490 then we have the birch color which is 3149 the palomino 2564 then we have the red 1599 then we have a peppercorn color, 987. And again, there's 193 that are unknown. So when we look here, the red seems to be a lot less in the RX because in the NX, there were actually quite a lot of reds being used. But it seems to be the ratio for the RX seems to be more towards black colored. So when we look at here, like for example, the Grecian water 62 are all black. They didn't pick any other color. But if you look at the ultra white, there's only black and the red. So most likely because it's an F-Sport color, that's our that's the only two colors that you can really pick in the interior. And let's see uh, the peppercorn. So peppercorn, there seems to be a lot of people picking it across the board. So it's not that like different. And I think the, the color combinations are going to work anyways because a lot of the rx colors are not those shocking colors and when you look at the copper crest copper crest still a lot of it is black then it comes to the macadamia so it's i think there's a nice blend here uh, but it's, it seems like black seems to be the common color for the rx all right, so now we're looking at the interior trim versus the interior color. And this is purely 2023 RX models. And when we compare this, this is going to be a little bit hard too, because in the NX, a lot of them are black. So you don't actually have the ash bamboo or another color. Uh, the graphite uh, aluminum, because that's the F-Sport trim. Uh, so I would say a lot of that would be quite similar to the F sport numbers. So let's start here. We have the black open pour wood. It's 10,167. So that is actually 50%. That's about 50% of the cars are actually getting this black open pour wood. Then we have 5,715 of ash bamboo. And then the dark graphite aluminum is 3,449. And then we have this black cascade, which is 548. So that is a very rare one when you look at all the other ones. And then there's still 193 of unknowns. So let's look at the black cascade. So the black cascade, most of it actually is the black and the macadamia, which I think makes sense. Uh, the colors actually blend quite well. And a lot of it, the peppercorn actually uses all the black uh, uh, open pour wood. Birch also uses the same. So, and it does make sense, right? Because the lighter color will follow the lighter color. And, yep. So, I think that's where you can get the blend. So, overall, black is still the majority. So, now this is the top dealerships for allocation. And again, um, this is where it's been allocated to. So, West Side Lexus is actually getting the most RXs with 310 allocated. 
Then we have JM Lexus at 290, Northside Lexus 283, and then Lexus of Glendale of 270. That's the top five. And you can come here and look at the remainder if you really wanted to. And Lexus of Memphis only gets 10. There we go. So just comparing this, if we look at the allocation of the NX and the RX, Westside Lexus is actually quite far down, further down the list. Uh, JM Lexus seems to be a big one because it was actually number three getting the NXs based on the chart, and it's number two here. So JM Lexus seems to be getting a lot of allocation. Lexus of Glendale is also number four on the NX, and it's number four here too. So Glendale is getting a lot of allocation as well. And then when you look at the number one, the Lexus of uh, Pernbrook Pines is actually the num number one allocation for the NX, is actually not too far behind, getting number six in the RX. All right, so the next slide is really just the breakdown of the 350, and then also we look at the hybrids. So JM Lexus Florida gets the most, 251. Northside Lexus in Texas gets 240. And then we have Lexus Pembroke Bind Pines, Florida gets 233. And then we have the Westside Lexus in Texas getting 232. So if you look at Lexus of North Miami, Florida also getting 188. So the top five here are mostly Florida and Texas. Now we look at the hybrids. So Jim Falk, Lexus of I don't know what else is there. California gets 73. Keys Lexus gets 63. Lexus of Bellevue gets 63. Lexus of Glendale in California gets 62. And Westside Lexus, Texas gets 59. So these are the top ones that are getting the 350Hs. And which one on the bottom? There's a lot who only get one. All right, so then we look at the RX500H. Lexus of Glendale being number one here, it's getting 61 allocation. Longo Lexus gets 46. Lexus of Bellevue also getting 46. So it seems like they're both getting similar allocations. Jim Falk Lexus of California it gets 41. And Stevenson Lexus Lakewood also gets 40. So here rounds the top five. So looking at this comparison, um, the dealers are actually a little bit different, it seems. They do get allocations across the board a little bit different, but I see that Lexus of Glendale seems to be getting a lot of vehicles here. And the last sheet is also the options breakdown, which is a little bit different for the from the NX to the RX because the options are a little bit different. And similarly, this is a point of reference. I wouldn't say this is 100%, but what, what we see in the sheet is what we get. So, number one, 10% of the vehicles get the 120 volt AC inverter. And then we look at the 14 inch infotainment, about 12,198, about 61% gets the 14 inch screen. About 31% actually gets the power rear, rear seats. And 0.1% gets the activity mount. I'm assuming that one you can install afterwards. 46.3% gets advanced park. And that's quite interesting because when you look at the NX, the advanced park, only 3.5% get advanced park. But in the RX, 46.3% get advanced park. The all weather mats, 26.8%, so 5,387. And when you look at that and you compare that with the NX, it's about 17.6%. So there's still more vehicles are getting the all weather mats as well. The body side moldings, 2.7%. And when you look at that, that's quite similar to the NX. NX is 2.5%. The carpet cargo mat, 39.4%. That seems to be quite low, I would say, for uh, the RX, because the NX is about 41%. And probably the reason why is they actually have also combinations. They have like the cargo tray, mud guard, and door edge guard as a package, and that's 0.7% actually got that package. And then when we look down here, we have the cargo mat, net, and key glove. 
at 9.5%. So maybe when you add all these to here, maybe you do get the similar percentage comparing to the NX. And then we look at the cargo net. 41.1% actually get the cargo net. Cold weather package, this is quite surprising. 91.3% actually gets the cold weather package. And you compare that to the NX, 7.3% gets that cold weather package. It seems different here. Dash cam, 2.6%. On the NX, is only 2%. When we look at the digital key, 43.1%. And in the NX, it's 45.9%. So very close. Digital rear view mirror, 14,197, 71.4%. That is quite high for the digital rear view mirror. And I'm not sure if I actually had the digital rear view mirror on the NX. Yes, it doesn't look like I actually had pulled that information. So if there is, I'll probably would pull it and add it to it if there is that information to be pulled. Heads-up display, 26.2%. That seems to be low, I would say. But again, I don't know. Some of it may be a package to be added or it's already included in the package. So not easy to uh, figure that information out. And then the headlamp washers and cornering lamps, 7,624. That's 38.3%. Heated and ventilated rear seats is about 40.5%. Heated wood and leather steering wheel is about 24.9%. Illuminated door steel, 16.4%. And on this one, the NX is 17.9%. And then we look at key gloves. I don't know, 3.5%. This one typically I would think is either they have to add it in as the markup or something. I don't know why that would be included or someone would actually purchase that. Also, the next one, the Lexus Quick Charge Cable. 4,000 of them, that's 20.4%. And then we have the Lexus Universal Tablet Holder, five units, so it's 0%. Then we have the Mark Levinson, 5,182. And when you look at that, like this is 25.8%. The NX, only 10.6% get that. Then we have the Mudguards, 32.9%. And the NX is 31.9, very, very close. Then we have the panoramic glass roof, 43.1%, and the NX is 23.5. Then we have the panoramic view monitor, 59.6, almost 60% getting the panoramic view monitor, and the NX is only 23.5. Then we look at the power rear door kick sensor, it's 90. 3.1%. So most of most RXs actually come with it then. Right? Then we have the triple beam LED, 7,624. That's only 38%. So a lot of it is still getting the buy LEDs, I guess. Then we have this rear bumper app applique, which is really uh, a protection of the rear bumper. That's about 23.3%. That's an un again another add-on. Then we have the roof rack, the, the, the crossbar bars, 1,154, 5.7%. And we have 4.3% actually getting the running board prep package. So I'm seeing that's a prep package, meaning it has the holes and all the stuff and it doesn't come, come with the running boards. I don't know. Then we have traffic jam assist, which is something new. 72.4%. So a lot of these vehicles are actually expected to drive in traffic jams. Then we have the ventilated front seats, 9.6%, 9, 1,931. I'm assuming this is an add-on to the premium or whatever, uh, because probably the other trims are already included, and that's why it doesn't have it as options. And then wheel locks, 2. And <laughs> that's 0%. And the NX, there's 1,304 actually got wheel locks. So I don't know why that's big of a difference there. So there we have it. We have all the same slides that I had for the NX into the RX. And the information is definitely a little bit different. And I hope this information is informative to you and you're interested to see more. So let me know if you're interested to see another model like the RZ or the LS. 
let me know and I'll spend some time and produce it and create this, another video for those models. So until next time, drive safely. Thank you for watching. If you like this video, please comment, like, and share this video. If you'd like to see more videos like this, you can subscribe to my channel and press that alert button to get notified when new videos are posted. If you'd like to support the channel, you can definitely provide a super thank. I'll see you guys again next time in the next video.